Today we are going to delve into something you are going to regret knowing. You are about to take a long, exciting journey into the dark recesses of my mind. Prepare to see exactly how this thing works. What is up, pretty people? It's me, your girl, your Casey. How you doing? So, rating systems. We all got them, but they all vary. I've seen people who have a 10 star rating system and they just condense it down for like Goodreads. Divide it by two, I guess. I've seen some who give letter grades. Some people who just don't even bother rating books. They just tell you if it's good or not. And that can lead to a whole new argument like, do we have to give books numbers or can we just say it's bad, it's good, it's great? My opinion, yes we do. Because how else am I going to organize stuff on Goodreads if I don't get it a little number? Rating a book is usually pretty easy for me but I thought I would give you guys a little glimpse into what I look for and what I expect from books and what criteria you need to meet to get a five star in my worldly opinion I am essentially that critic from Ratatouille I don't like reading I love it if I don't love it I don't finish it so that means my rating system is absolutely perfect. And I do rate on a five star scale, and that's all Goodreads fault. It does it, so I do it. And that first star is honestly the easiest star to get with me. The first star is devoted to writing. The writing style, grammar, word structure, and also the dialogue and exposition. The first half of the first star is pretty simple. Can you write a sentence? Do you know where to, where to put a semicolon? Are the paragraphs cohesive and easy to read? Or is there too much detail blocking it down? It's a pretty easy star to win with me but if you fail epically at just like or you succeed epically at just bombarding me with information like immediately I DNF it like it does not even get that one star. In my opinion on what is too detailed and what's not detailed enough really varies like with fantasy books I like detail just not too much like I read Red Rising I love that book but there are times like when there was when that was describing scenery just like buildings and skyscrapers that it was just way too much and I was getting pulled away from the action to just see what type of shape this building has. But with thrillers, I want as little detail as possible because, you know, they're in the modern world. We know the modern world pretty well. We don't need a bunch of facts about, oh, the crown molding of my Victorian-esque house. Just tell me it's a house and I will make it up in my mind. Unless it's one of those thrillers like um, Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware or Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, where the house itself is very fundamental to the story, then I get why it's more descriptive. Dialogue is so important to me because dialogue is firmly attached to our characters. And right now, currently, I am just reading so many books where just the character dialogue just seems like a vehicle for exposition. Like we're not building bonds, we're not acting like normal people, we're just like vomiting world facts onto the readers. I do not like being vomited on. I guess the first star is just how you present the story and how you, yeah, lay down all the facts. It's the first star so it's the groundwork get the groundwork right for the story, then we can start building up to the second star, which is actually, I feel like, my most important star, characters. Like with exposition and dialogue, the character is the most important facet of the book to me because I'm a character reader. Do I like your character? Or do I hate them to the point that I love reading about them? That keeps me hooked. Like, everything else beyond this point could be bad. But if I just love this character and I want to know what's going on in their life and if they make it out of this mess, then I will keep reading because that's my baby right there. If you took Kaladin from the Stormlight Archive, Kavoth from Name of the Wind, or Fitz from Assassin's Apprentice and just sent them all in a grocery store shopping spree, it could be so boring but I would be there for it because those are my boys and I don't care what they're doing. I feel like so much of that character star is hinging on that first star too because they could be the most heroic character doing all the right good deeds but if you cannot get that across well through the writing then it's a dud so those first two stars you gotta nail them this third star on this list is devoted to the plot why are we here what are we doing why am I reading this? It is just amazing how how the term plot can vary throughout the genre of books. We could have a mystery plot, discover why this person was killed plot. We could have a fantasy plot that has quests, monster slaying. Or we could have a contemporary plot, which is just like a little girl learning how to cook. And I think this third star plot is what 
divides people the most. Or more accurately, just like defines what their genre is. Like for me, I like thrillers. That's one of my favorite genres because I know immediately it's going to be high stakes, um, kind of a slow burn. It's going to be kind of spooky too. But I do not like magical realism because I know immediately that the plot is going to be, well first, it's going to have that first star and just be really flowery, very lush narrative, which sounds great, but it makes the story, the plot, really hard to decipher. Mysteries, you automatically know, focus more on the event, the plot, more than it does the character, which is why I don't like mysteries that much. So that's another genre I kind of stay away from because it doesn't meet my star requirement. I would love to start picking up those books. I would love to pick up some contemporaries, but I usually don't because I know they're kind of more ambling. I need to do more mysteries too because I just bought like a collection of Agatha Christie books that was like five dollars on in Kindle. But go ahead and tell me what genres you gravitate towards and what you don't because that's really interesting. I like seeing what people's tastes are, but also we're getting to the fourth star. This one is very, I feel like, exclusive to me maybe a few others. The fourth star is rereadability. So when I look at books, books are expensive y'all and I don't want to get a one-time use out of them and I really don't want to DNF them and not finish it and get my money's worth. So when I buy a book, I want it to be so good that I'll reread it because that's a lot of value to me personally. I've read so many books on my shelves multiple times. Starting booktube, I really haven't reread a lot because I want to finish a bunch of these unread books on my shelf. But when I'm having like a bad reading month, or even like getting close to a reading slump, I want to go back to something I know is trustworthy and that I can rely on for a fun time. And it's great if you let a little bit of time go past since your first reading of the book because then you forget stuff. Then you go back and you get to relive all that again and you even get to like see things you didn't realize before. I love rereading The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Carolini because every time I go back into there I discover something new. Rereading to me is honestly so fun and if you don't do that tell me why. Maybe you just have like an amazing memory you can quote it like right off your tongue. I can't. So we have writing style, plot, characters, and rereading ability. I feel like I typically give books a three or a four, but that fifth star, the one that elevates it to perfection, is a little bit harder to discern or really just like dis to describe. It's called the wow factor. This is just where like a bunch of miscellaneous stuff adds up into like that one little glowing star at the very end. It's where all the feelings this book got out of me fits in. It's where I'm just like this plot or like the situation the characters went through is so unique. I feel like yeah chiefly it's how much emotion the book yanked out of me forcibly because I'm a stone hearted gargoyle. One book that I gave a three was The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I feel like it did kind of drop the ball plot wise towards the end but that book like had me yelling all the time because so much bad stuff happened to our character Theo. So it got that star right there. It failed in other areas, but still, I recommend that book. And also just thinking of the stars overall. One means terrible, or it's a DNF that I intend never to finish again. If it's a DNF and I'm just like not feeling it in the moment, I won't rate it, but I'll mark it in my DNF shelf. But if it's a DNF I know absolutely well, I will never go to, I will give it a one star. Because then it failed in every single possible way it could have. Two stars is usually bad. It's bad. Like, it was well enough that the writing was okay. There was one other little factor that was keeping me going, but nothing else was like enticing me to really stay. Three stars is meh. Like, it's okay. It exists. Not really wowing me, but it's fine. Four is good, which is maybe it failed at the ending, it had a little rough patch in the middle, stuff like that where I only have like maybe two or three issues. In that fifth star, it's either like genuine perfection or it just hit like every single book trope that I love. <laughs> and I know, I know there are some weird shady people out there who think the existence of half stars is a sin. One of them comes to mind immediately, but he is awesome, so like go subscribe to his channel. He wears cool hats, so I forgive him, but I am a gigantic advocate of the half stars. I know for a fact I gave a book a, a quarter star at one time. It was like a 4.25, but it all varies. I know that this is not 
this method isn't suited for everyone. There's people out there I know that never reread books, ever. But go ahead and tell me what you guys look for and what's important to you that it's in your rating system. Is one of those stars maybe just devoted to the cover? Because I feel like that's kind of me also sometimes. Like that kind of goes into that fifth miscellaneous star factor. And have you guys ever given the book the dreaded one star? And what book would you bestow no stars on? Thank you guys so much for watching. I am Casey. You are beautiful and stay reading, my friends.